Welcome to Comet Compass of Private Limited, e learning program of network interconnecting devices. So today we are going to discuss about um, uh, the interconnectivity devices for establishing the network. So connection of multiple computers, we call it as a network, but uh, for connecting those computers locally or over the globe or uh, remote areas, we need the cables and connectors. Along with that, we also need the connectivity devices. So in this session, we are going to discuss about the different types of connectivity devices available in the industry uh, over the past, what kind of devices we used and now uh, with the current uh, technology trending. So what is the devices we are um, employing with the uh, uh, different type of offices uh, based on their budget, based on their environment, based on their design. So we'll discuss all those things in this uh, uh, session. So an interconnecting device is any device that can enable computers to exchange data on a network. So it means that it can be a hub or switch, any kind of physical device which is used for connecting to computers. So it can be a small LAN network or an enterprise uh, wide area network. Definitely we need a, a connectivity devices. So LAN we use switch or hub. Case of WAN we use router but it is an interconnecting device. So it is going to be the backbone of a network because um, it's a network infrastructure. We call it as backbone of a network. So without which we will not be to establish the communication with the remote offices. Our office will get isolated if the link is down, if the device is down and we will not be able to do a kind of transactions with the other offices. So that is the uh, importance of having uh, network interconnectivity devices. So normally we had hub, repeaters, bridges, switches, routers and gateways. And these are all the uh, common devices we use as interconnectivity devices. And some of them are very old, which is not used uh, in the industry. But most of the devices we are currently using in the industry. Uh, let's start with hub. Uh, hub is a small uh, device where um, it is helping us for connecting a limited number of um, uh, ports. Maybe uh, we started with four ports and then later eight, 16, uh, 24 ports, not more than that. Uh, we go for connecting hubs. So normally 10 to 15 systems we recommended uh, with the help of hub. Sometimes uh, we used to cascade the hub uh, like uh, one up with another hub. Uh, if at all I have more number of systems, suppose I have 20 systems or 30 systems, I have 8 port uh, hub. So what I can do is I have to use the uplink cable to connect multiple hubs together so that I can connect all the 30 systems in a single uh, office. So here uh, we recommend to have 10 to 15 systems as a single network. If you expand more than that, what happens is um, because these are all not intelligent devices like uh, your uh, switches or routers so they will not be able to uh, pass on the information quickly and uh, this is running with 10 mbps or 100 mbps uh, not more than that so uh, obviously we will not have good communication between the system or uh, possibility of uh, sending and receiving the data will be very less so that's the reason we um, stopped for a limited number of systems with 5 or 10 systems, it is good um, uh, for a kind of uh, lab setup, internet browsing center or university college labs, uh, computer lab or department lab, lab. So those places we can use this kind of hubs where you will get 100 Mbps speed and a good communication between the devices. So it doesn't have any intelligent device. So it, it passes on the information from one system to other system. We have CSMA by CD, CSMA by CA, carrier sense multiple access with collusion deduction. CSMA by CA, carrier sense multiple access with collusion avoidance. These devices falls under uh, CSMA by CD because it detects only the collusion, but it cannot do anything with the avoidance and all. So uh, obviously um, it, it falls under uh, low communicating device compared to other device. If this operates on a physical layer and um, uh, this doesn't have any kind of additional features like uh, filtering the data or uh, filtering the package from source or destination, those kind of segregations it cannot do. It can just do a uh, catch and dispatch kind of job. 
So hubs, um, we connected uh, different systems in hub. We call it as a star topology normally and um, hub and spoke also. We, we can also call it as a hub and spoke method because uh, in cycle we have hub and spoke, right? So in the same way, the connectivity device will be in the middle, middle uh, or in the sense it will be in the center of the office. All the connections from the systems will be reaching to the uh, hub so that um, uh, we get uh, equal number of length with all the systems otherwise few systems will have a less uh, size length of cable and uh, the few system will have more system more length because of which um, it may lose the uh, existing communication so though it is called as hub and spoke if at all i have multiple um, hubs available uh, department wise uh, i have to connect so I may go for hierarchical level of uh, connection, right? Um, connecting two hubs, I'll use another hub for um, connecting both the hubs. So this is the hierarchical way of connecting a uh, hub, star topology. So we had uh, active hub and passive hub. In the hub itself, we have two classifications. So in case of active hub, it is able to amplify and regenerate the information signal. So whatever it, whatever it is receiving as an input, it will be able to amplify to the destination port. This has advantage of um, amplifying the incoming signal, so uh, it can uh, it can forward it to the multiple devices. Normally in hub, so there is no advanced mechanisms like switch, so it sends the information to all the ports, all the uh, to the, all the systems. Then uh, the respective system will acknowledge the rest of the systems will deny. So that is how uh, hub will be communicating. That's the reason we get more collusion domains in the uh, hub. So if at all you have eight systems, eight ports, you will have eight collusion domains. In case of switch, you will have only one collusion domain. So that is the advantage of having switch. Um, so this hub is also known as a multi-port repeater because it is amplifying the signal uh, in a better way. So it is also called as a multi-port repeater. Passive hub less than the capability of active hub. So it is just a, a dumb terminal for connecting multiple systems. You, you cannot even expect a quality nature of uh, active hubs in the passive hubs. So there may be difference in the rates in the olden, tech, olden time um, based on the uh, requirement they have purchased this kind of hubs. Advantages uh, less expensive compared to the next level devices. So covering the distance maximum 100 meters not more than that and um, in the hub side no processing is done it is doing only catch and dispatch so it will be uh, faster disadvantages um, it doesn't have any intelligence to uh, filter the traffic no switching table no uh, mac address filtering all those things it will broadcast to all the ports which leads to inefficiencies and wastage so that's the reason we call it as a collusion domain so it sends the data to all the systems wherever it is not required also. Um, if suppose 8 port switch, eight port hub is available and one system is triggering the data to other system in the among the 8 systems. So this one system will send the data to all the other 7 systems leaving the uh, source machine. So all the 7 systems will get the data. Whoever is wanted to get the data, they will consume it and um, they will retransmit the acknowledgement. So that is how uh, the hub transmission is happening. And uh, we call in individual port, we have a collisions, right? The, between the data, there will be a collisions occurring. And that's the reason we had slow transmission of data in case of hubs. So repeater, so advanced form of hub is a repeater. So it is um, used in case of uh, long distances like you have a campus area network or a factory uh, network where you wanted to ex extend uh, a few kilometers and all right. So in that case, we will have to go for having a repeater. So we will be giving the input. The repeater will amplify the signal and uh, it will retransmit the same data in a good manner. Normally, in case of cable TV communications, you would have seen uh, they will install the repeater after four or five streets so that um, any signal is reaching uh, after a lot of transmission losses. From that uh, street, that home, the booster will be there. It will boost the signal and uh, next people, set of people will get good uh, communication of uh, uh, the cable TV uh, with good clarity in the pictures, right? So in the same way, repeater is also established wherever there is a requirement after a certain distance. 
So it will just receive the data, amplify the data if there is any low volume of signals. It will amplify uh, with the higher uh, signal and uh, it will help you to retransmit the data in a good manner. So that is the purpose of having a repeater. So receiving the data, it works in all the layers. Uh, functions of a repeater, uh, repeater receives signals from one our network segment and uh, uh, retransmit to the next uh, uh, network segment. Here it shows like um, it gets the data in a bad shape whereas after um, uh, filtering the uh, data with the help of repeater it is going in a good format. So repeater forwards every frame it has no filtering capability it does not have any intelligency to uh, filter the uh, frames uh, so it is working in the data link layer and operates with the help of frames so it can extend only the physical length of the network not a logical connection but it can be used for extending your uh, physical connection like in a factory you are establishing another network so you can put one repeater and then beyond that you can have one hub or switch then you connect the systems to the hub advantage it it is helping to extend the length of the network strengthening the weak signal and removing the unwanted noise so the data transmission may happen faster it has no filtering capability it cannot connect to different architecture so it can support only ethernet or any other specific architecture not as a combined one uh, number of repeaters used should be less since it is amplifying we cannot go for adding hundreds of repeater there should be some five or six less than ten otherwise no uh, the purpose of having repeater will be wasted next one is is a bridge so bridge is normally a device which is used for connecting to um, a separate network that is ethernet network only both of them are internet i mean ethernet so it will be helping to connect both the ethernet network so bridging occurs at the data link layer it works in the layer 2 of osl layer and um, it is helping to um, read the data in a better way compared to other devices uh, the hardware address is also read from the data which is called as a mac address media access control it will be capturing all the details about the packet which is receiving function of a bridge when the frame enters in not only regenerates the signal it receives so bridge will be regenerating the signal um, whatever data it gets it will be uh, regenerating so that um, if there is any uh, weaker part so it will get uh, rectified and uh, it is also checking the source and destination address of the frame um, so from which system it is generating the data and where it has to uh, delivered so both source and destination information is available and it maintains a table um, with the details it will be marking in the table itself and um, it is sending the data to the concerned uh, system right so not like hub so one transmission it's get transmitted to multiple system but in case of um, a bridge it will have destination address so directly the communication happens between the endpoints from here to that another endpoints so if if suppose the destinations address it is in the same segment so we'll have multiple networks right so wherever i want to transfer the data that system falls under the same network so it will be identifying the data from the uh, table and uh, uh, shares information to the particular system if not it will go for forwarding the frame to the next segment and find out whether the matching destination is available in that place or not so this is how a bridge operates so it helps to connect uh, multiple networks together advantage so bridge it's a form of device which is uh, released before the switch is getting released so you can see the features which is similar to the switch which is available now so it minimizes the unwanted traffic and it acts as a filter so there will be when only specific traffic going from uh, the particular system to the other system it will not be sending the junk data and it minimizes the network congestion uh, error links can be easily identified with the help of uh, the checksum uh, details and um, 
it helps to lower the data load over the data link layer so uh, all these things adding adding the advantage with the uh, uh, device and um, it is giving the benefit to the uh, end user disadvantage the speed is lower than the repeater but it is faster than the routers because it is doing very specific process uh, of sending the data from source to destination so this thing this can be done faster compared to other uh, uh, service providers so cost is expensive than repeaters but a bit, bit cheaper than uh, routers so since it is having advanced technology compared to repeater it is costlier but uh, compared to router it is cheaper um, this cannot handle multiple parts it will hand only very limited parts so this is the advantage and disadvantages of um, uh, bridge switch so it's advanced form of device which is used for connecting um, uh, multiple systems in a network um, so it depends like 16 port 48 port uh, what 24 port whatever the size you are buying so this can communicate um, uh, with that particular uh, switch in the network so it is used for connecting multiple um, uh, uh, segments also uh, provided you have routing protocol enabled in the system and suppose um, um, person in the HR department person in the accounts department person in the um, quality department they wanted to interact so they will be able to provide a secure channel for establishing the kind of network connection so all these things can be possible with the help of l3 switch manageable switch okay so uh, non-manageable switch we cannot do anything uh, we can just use it as a connectivity device so not more than that so it performs data link layer function that it looks at each package or data and determines from a physical address so this is also called as a it works on two different layers so um, there are some switches which is called as a l3 switch so it means that it will act as a um, l2 switch and um, l3 switch also so separately um, so it will be useful for uh, communicating to the network and uh, l3 switch will have some advantage like uh, we'll be able to manage some of the parameters in the switch but l2 switch you'll not be able to handle anything so whatever the default connections we'll have to go with the default connections so connecting switches with the systems this is how you connect your systems with the uh, switches so switch allows more than one system to get connected and uh, it is faster than uh, the uh, the previous devices and it is also maintains a table a mac table uh, where uh, the source mac address destination mac address um, um, will also be captured uh, during the communication so switches having a separate learning process like uh, when the switch is getting turned on so what happens is um, the switching table will be very free empty and uh, um, it it checks all the ports available in the switch and finds out um, um, some of the ports are connected with system and uh, some of the ports are left empty so it will be marking all the details and um, it starts building the switching table so in the say in the uh, switch so that um, uh, it it learns like from which port uh, the system is getting this kind of information and uh, based on which uh, they will be marking the device and um, uh, use it for a specific uh, purpose transmission purpose so this becomes very easier for uh, uh, sending and receiving the data uh, within the switch between the network so uh, i can i can use with a very effective manner and um, i'll have faster communication uh, with the help of this uh, technology Advantages only for forward frame as needed, so it cannot forward it to many people. Um, only when um, requirement comes, um, it will be able to communicate. It extends the geographical span of the network, so it is helping you for expanding the network. And the separate segments allow longer distances, improves privacy by limiting scope of the frames. So these are the advantages. Disadvantages. Um, switches are not good as routers because always the higher device is the highest device in the uh, organization so 
so compared to router the switches are not that much uh, available so we'll um, if i go to the next level the router will be the best one and beyond that we have other devices with that will be better than the router okay so here for just for reference purpose we are saying um, it is not good as a router but uh, real time we can take l3 switch which will also function as a um, router so it is difficult to reconfigure if any network error occurs in multicasting so we will not go for multicast connection mostly it will be uh, from um, uh, connection purpose it will be used so if switches are promiscuous mode they are vulnerable to security attacks like spoofing ip address or capturing the ethernet frames and uh, compared to it is higher in um, uh, cost compared to hub or other connected device um, less than the router so router so router is a l3 device which is used for uh, connecting um, multiple networks comparatively uh, than the other um, uh, networking devices this is used for communicating between the networks earlier one it is used for same architecture but here we can also uh, get the help for uh, adding multiple architecture in the uh, switch uh, in the router uh, so we can be able to communicate between different networks so it like router is like switches maintaining a switching table router is maintaining a routing table which is uh, very much useful for identifying the systems for the network uh, for getting the details and uh, passing on the information to the destination machine and uh, uh, sending the information to the uh, destination there are three major difference between router and a repeater or a bridge so what are the three reasons so one is um, router has a physical and logical IP address for each interface. So I have Ethernet interface, serial interface, and um, uh, voice over interface, multiple interface available. So I'll be having the interfaces um, uh, for individual devices, not like your switch. So that gives advantage, right? Um, it'll have a separate controller and uh, you'll get faster communication. So it works in the layer 3 and uh, passes the uh, network packets uh, to other systems. So advantage easily shared internet security and adaptability routers limits uh, the collision to the domain. So there will not be any collisions. Routers can function as uh, LAN and WAN. It can be used for both um, LAN and WAN. So it is used for connecting two different uh, architectures like um, token ring and uh, ethernet. So if, we, if required, we can use that also. Disadvantage, it is more expensive than other connected devices. Uh, the routing updates, the frequent updates will be sent from this router to other router that is consuming uh, more cost. And it is a complicated setup without knowledge, L3 knowledge, you will not be able to uh, do anything in the router. Next is a gateway, the advanced form of uh, uh, connectivity device. It is a component that is part of two networks, which is used for different protocols. So earlier we said different architecture. Now this is for different um, uh, protocol what we have. So normally gateway will be working in all the layers. So that it is uh, communicating in all the layers and um, sending and receiving the data uh, from all the systems, in the, all the layers. So it is also forwarding the packet to different networks and uh, trying to find out whether the system is available in that network or not. And then only it is communicating to the uh, devices. So interconnecting devices, so how it is connected. Advantage, the direct linking between internal and external hosts are denied. So in network gateway, the user level authentication or protection is supported and can connect to connect our links to variant networks so it can connect to different networks so that is not a problem right so uh, the protocol conversion is done and it handles the traffic problems so once the protocol is con protocol uh, download is completed then uh, it will immediately take up the uh, communication process Disadvantage, it is not an intellectual equipment. Uh, router is manufactured by multiple vendors. Cisco router is a famous one. So, 
um, Cisco gateway. I mean, uh, we can also have different types of uh, devices from different vendors, whichever is best for our environment, we can um, uh, utilize it. So we have reached the end of the topic. Um, we have covered multiple devices available and uh, each differences. And uh, currently we are using uh, switches and uh, routers for any kind of uh, environmental connections. So we have reached the end of the topic. Thank you very much.